Wake up and die, tough guy. Go ahead, move a little. I'll cut you a little. You move a lot, I'll split you like a hog. Beretta was a grittier, dark kind of a drama, you know, and he was, he was in your face. <laughs> You didn't know, did you? Most people don't. You just pull a trigger and somebody dies. And they don't come back no more. He was a very intense guy. And he was a guy who had a very intense operating style. What are you doing this for, Tony? You take a guy like a cell out in the weeds and unload a gun at him. Why? I'm going to rattle him. I'm going to rattle him good. What does it get you? I'll tell you what it's going to get me. I'm going to keep pushing him till I get his brain so scrambled that he makes that one big mistake. And then I'm going to be there. And I'm going to nail him, Billy. I'm going to nail him because he's bad. Hey! You pigs looking for us? They're young. They're tough. They work together. Starsky and Hutch. In 1975, Starsky and Hutch became television's first pinup cops. They were hip and handsome, and they brought the decades youth and attitude to law enforcement. What's the matter, punk? You lose your nerve? I love Starsky and Hutch because they were real buddies. That was Hutch humor. I mean, they would have a 10 minute argument whether they're going to go to the hot dog stand for lunch or the hamburger stand. Will you please be careful? You're going to spill the. See what you did all over my seats. No, Starsky. The underlying hostility that triggers first and temper like that is usually associated with immaturity. Oh, I see. Just because I don't want you to spill your breakfast all over my seat, suddenly I'm immature. I, I never said that. No, what you're saying is that I'm hostile, which makes me immature. Well, I'd like to know where you get off thinking that I'm hostile. Zebra 3, Zebra 3, come in, please. What do you want? I think that in the relationship of these two characters, people found a tremendous amount of trust and dependency on each other and the fact that in the midst of this chaotic world such a relationship could exist. Not all 70s cops look like rock stars. I was proud to be one crime fighter who relied on brain over brawn in pursuit of some of television's most cunning bad guys. Oh. Believe me, I know just how you feel. You brownski, I don't even know how I feel. Columbo was a great show. And what was brilliant about the way it was written was that you knew who murdered them from the get-go, and you still wanted to watch to see how he caught them. But to tell you the truth, I came here, I think, to make an arrest. Mrs. Holly? Yes? My name is Joe Maddox. I'm a private investigator. I wonder if we could talk. The private investigators of 70s television stood in stark contrast to their no-nonsense police counterpart. They were reluctant heroes whose talent for solving crime was often rooted in their quirky personalities and unconventional methods. <laughs> I fell for that trick once myself. Works pretty good, doesn't it? I would say The Rockford Files was uh, miles ahead of all the other crime shows on television because of the personality of James Garner. He has a wit, a genuine wit, and a style you just want to watch it. You gotta be one of the dumbest looking apes I ever saw. No private eye ever had a father or a relative. Mannix, I never knew who his family was, you know? So I just sat down and I just thought, I'm just going to break every rule that I can think of that pertains to private detectives. Hey, I'm sorry, man. You just caught me at a bad time, huh? But reading that detective fiction doesn't help, really. Read things aren't like that, you know? They're never black and white. There aren't any heroes that die young. See? His gun is deadly. Why isn't a cookie gun? Underneath, he was really a softie. You know, and he knew he was a softie, and uh, he was a guarding against it all the time. Well, hold it a minute, huh? Can't we talk?
talk about this, and you talk about it a little while, and if I say some of the wrong things, you can always get to this. What do you say? That was a really wonderful character because he was a reluctant hero as opposed to a, an expected hero. You've been fighting. Not me, you know. The other guys did the fighting. I stood there and caught punches. So could I trade this thing for a scotch and soda, please? Did you ever see a show in the 70s where the good guys lost? They don't want to see the good guys lose. They see that every damn day on the streets, in their offices, in their homes. You could go to bed at night knowing that guys like Rockford and uh, Kojak and uh, Starsky and Hodge were out there in the streets making it safe for the rest of us. You just do that. We create characters and situations that provide us with some sense that it is possible to create an order in the chaos. And that is our world of uh, police drama. Up next, Mary Tyler Moore, B. Arthur, and Linda Carter, and how the women of the 70s changed television. Don't go away.